Let's just clear something up. Surfacing your spoilboard shouldn't feel like solving a crime scene. And eyeballing it like a caveman, that's not alignment, that's just guessing. In minutes, I'll show you how you can fix both. And by the end of it, you'll look and feel like a pro. But first, let's set up that toolpath for surfacing your spoilboard. Here we are on VCarve Pro, and if you're using different software, the steps should be more or less the same. So first thing we need to do is create a new file. And then we're going to set up the job size as the exact size of your spoilboard. Now I'm using millimeters and mine is 1200 millimeters by 810. And then I've got the thickness, date and position. I'm going to click center and then click OK. Next, we want to head up to our layers, click on that. And then let's just rename this to something like surfacing. Click enter and click out of that. And now we need to create a rectangle that goes around the outside of our spoil board. So to do this, we're just going to go to draw a rectangle. We're going to click on square. And then depending on the diameter of the surfacing bit you are using, you're just going to divide that by two. And then you're going to head down to size. And this is a neat little trick you have with VCarve. So all you have to do is type in X plus half the diameter, 12.7 equals. And then you do the same for Y, Y plus 12.7 equals. Then you click create and close. And as you can see here, we've got our rectangle perfectly aligned around the outside. If it's not, just click on it and then go over to the align tool and then just center that on the horizontal and vertical axis. Next, we're going to go up to our switch to toolpath commands and head over to pocket toolpath. Now for this one, I'm just going to take off 0.5 millimeters and I've already got my surfacing bit selected. It's one inch or 25.4 millimeters in diameter. Underneath passes, we're going to go with raster. We're going to click on climb. And for a profile path, we're going to click first. What that's going to do is go around the outside of the spoil board, and then it'll go from left to right. These surfacing bits are not really meant to plunge straight down. So what you need to do is ease it in with a ramp. And the general rule of thumb that I like to follow is do at least twice the diameter of your surfacing bit. So for example, if it's 25.4 uh, millimeters, I would just round it up to 30 and make that 60 millimeters. Give this a name and we'll call this surfacing and then just click calculate. Before I run the preview, I always like to pick a color for my toolpath because that'll reveal if that toolpath has actually missed anything. If you get a nice big solid block like this, then you are pretty much good to go. One last thing here is just to make sure that you deselect this toolpath and then click close. And then we're going to go back to design commands by clicking this button, scroll all the way to the left, click 2D view, and then go back to our layers. Now we're going to deselect this one and add a new layer. Don't worry about a name, just click out of that. And what we are going to do now is add our vertical lines for the grid. So what we do is click on our draw line tool, click on the bottom left hand corner and go straight up to the top left hand corner. Click on that and then go sideways. Now, depending on the size of the grid you want, all you need to do is enter that into your keyboard and press enter. If I want a 40 by 40 millimeter grid, I just type in four zero and hit enter. And that's going to lock it into place. So if I move down, click, go to the right and enter four zero on my keyboard and press enter again and then press escape. So now I've got a vector that goes up, down and comes to the right like this. Next, we have to duplicate this and we're going to use the array copy tool on the left hand side. So click on that. And then we're not interested in rows, but we do need columns. Now, if you're like me and you don't like counting on your fingers, just enter a whole bunch of them, something like 20, for example, and click copy. So now if we zoom out, you can see we've got too many on this side. 
And all we need to do now is select those and delete. So just here on the right hand side, I'll show you there's one line missing, which is not a big deal because all we need to do is just go and draw that one in manually like this and escape. So now we've got all our vertical lines done. So head back up to your layers, deselect this one and add another one. And now we're going to do our horizontal layers. So click on the draw line tool, go from left to right and then up 40, enter back to the left, click, go up again, four zero, enter and then hit escape. Now again, we're going to duplicate that. And in this instance, we don't want columns, we want rows. So we're going to do 20 again and hit copy. And now we've got all of these ones at the top and we just select those. And before I hit delete, I just want to show you, there's a little line right there that we need to replace. So if I hit delete, go back to the line tool, I can just go and add that back in like this and click hit escape and we are done. Now we can go back to our layers, activate this layer and then right click and go merge visible. So now both of those are lying on one layer and we can give this a name, let's call it grid. Now one last thing, these are all still individual vectors so we need to join all of these together. So simply highlight all of these and then go over to the left and select the join tool. From here, we just click join and close. So now if I click on this, we've got one vector. So one more time, let's go to our toolpath commands. And this time we're going to select quick engrave toolpath. I personally like to use a 90 degree V bit just because the lines are more visible. You can do it with a 60 degree or even 30 degree, but this just works for me. For the depth, we're just going to go with 0.5 millimeters and then just give it a name, call it grid and click calculate. So if I click on reset preview, you can see we've got our grid perfectly lined out on our scoreboard. Click close, click both of those and then save your tool paths. I would also suggest you go to file and click on save so you can save the actual file and that way you can edit it later on if you need to. After the first pass, I could see that these two points were the lowest. So one more pass required and that'll fix all of this. The grid itself only takes a couple of minutes to do, but I would recommend using dust collection for this part as well. And this is what I like about having a good grid system. It's very quick and easy to align your stock, clamp it down and you're good to go. Flip it around and you can go this way as well. Now that this is all done, you can go ahead and do some fancy engravings like these.